Hello friends. In this video, we are going to talk about polycythemia, its types, clinical features, the approach to its diagnosis, and briefly the management. Before going on to the main topic, let's just refresh a bit of applied physiology for this topic. As you may remember, red blood cells are produced by the pluripotent stem cells in the bone marrow. And erythropoietin, or in short EPO, is the hormone, made by the kidneys, that stimulates red cell production. Erythropoietin secretion itself is controlled in a negative feedback fashion. Hypoxia or hypoxemia, due to any reason, will stimulate erythropoietin production by the kidneys, so that more red cells are made, to meet the body's demand for oxygen. When those demands are met, or when the stimulus is over, negative feedback reduces the production of erythropoietin by the kidneys. Now we will start our main topic, polycythemia. What is polycythemia? Polycythemia is an increased hemoglobin concentration, and or hematocrit, in peripheral blood. Polycythemia is also called erythrocytosis, and we can use both terms interchangeably. What are the criteria to diagnose polycythemia? According to the World Health Organization definition, polycythemia is present if hematocrit is greater than 49% in healthy adult men and greater than 48% in women, or when hemoglobin is greater than 16.5 grams per deciliter in men or more than 16 grams per deciliter in women. In British literature, Polycythemia is defined as hematocrit greater than 52% in males and greater than 48% in females. What are the types of polycythemia? We can broadly divide polycythemia into two types. One is relative polycythemia, and the other is absolute, or true polycythemia. As you may make out from the terms, relative polycythemia is a polycythemia that is not due to an actual increase in hemoglobin or hematocrit. Rather, it is the false appearance of increased hematocrit or hemoglobin because of the relative reduction of the plasma volume for any reason. There are different causes for this. In acute settings, diarrhea and vomiting can cause relative polycythemia due to intravascular volume contraction or hemoconcentration. In chronic settings, this may be seen in hypertensive patients on diuretics, obese individuals, and smokers. Here I want to mention an exam favorite syndrome, Kala-Jaysbox syndrome. Gaysbox syndrome is also referred to as spurious polycythemia or stress polycythemia. Classically, this was described as polycythemia in anxious patients with hypertension, no splenomegaly, and reduced plasma volume. However, hypertension with diuretic use and smoking may account for the relative polycythemia in many of these individuals. On the other hand, absolute or true polycythemia is a real increase in hematocrit or hemoglobin. In absolute polycythemia, the increased red cell production can be due to increased erythropoietin or without it. This brings us to classify absolute polycythemia again into two types. One is primary polycythemia, and the other is secondary polycythemia. Primary polycythemia occurs due to red cell proliferation in the marrow, autonomously without erythropoietin. This happens in certain hematological malignancies. More common is polycythemia rubra vera. In polycythemia vera, a mutation in red cells makes its proliferation independent of erythropoietin-dependent signaling. Secondary polycythemia, on the other hand, is increased red cell proliferation due to increased erythropoietin. This increase in erythropoietin can be secondary to any hypoxic conditions, which can signal kidneys to produce more erythropoietin, and thus the production of more red cells by marrow to meet the oxygen demands of the body. These hypoxic conditions which stimulate erythropoietin production by kidneys, can be physiologic conditions, such as an individual living at a high altitude with low atmospheric oxygen pressure, or cigarette smokers. 
Erythropoietin production by kidneys can also increase in certain pathologic conditions, which demand kidneys for more erythropoietin to meet body oxygen demands through increased red cells and hemoglobin. These conditions include anemia, COPD, obstructive sleep apnea, cyanotic heart disease, intrapulmonary shunts, renal artery stenosis, and polycystic kidney disease. Sometimes, erythropoietin production occurs in certain tumors, independent of the hypoxic stimuli. Examples of such tumors include renal cell carcinoma, hepatocellular carcinoma, ovarian fibroma, and hemangioblastoma. How polycythemia can present clinically. Most commonly, polycythemia may be asymptomatic and is accidentally detected on complete blood counts. It may also present with vague symptoms due to hyperviscosity. The symptoms are headaches, dizziness, tinnitus, and visual disturbance. Facial plethora may be obvious. Patients with polycythemia rubra vera can have some characteristic features like aquagenic pruritus, which is itching after exposure to water, and erythromelalgia, which is a burning sensation in fingers and toes. There is splenomegaly in up to 60%, and gout due to high red cell turnover. Due to hyperviscosity and stasis, they have an increased risk of arterial thromboses, particularly stroke and venous thromboembolism. Coming on to the assessment of polycythemia. First, assess whether polycythemia is relative or absolute. Relative polycythemia is usually obvious in acute settings in a patient with a history of diarrhea, vomiting, and dehydration. In this situation, polycythemia is secondary to hemoconcentration. In non-acute conditions, the presence of hypertension, smoking, excess alcohol consumption, and diuretic use is consistent with low-volume polycythemia, or Gaysbox syndrome. On the other hand, hematocrit values of over 60% in males and over 56% in females can be assumed to have true polycythemia or absolute erythrocytosis. Measure vital signs and oxygen saturation and look for splenomegaly. Low oxygen saturation will point toward diseases causing secondary polycythemia. The presence of splenomegaly in the presence of increased white blood cells or platelets will hint towards polycythemia vera. Do renal and liver function tests, peripheral blood film microscopy, and measure erythropoietin levels. Measuring erythropoietin levels will help distinguish between primary and secondary polycythemia. In primary, it is expected to be low, while in secondary it will be high. As mentioned a while ago, splenomegaly, the presence of additional blood cell abnormalities hints toward primary polycythemia. Here the erythropoietin levels are also low. In primary polycythemia, since polycythemia rubra vera is the main differential, the test is done for the V617F mutation in the JK2 gene. It is present in over 90% of cases. Bone marrow examination may be needed in some cases of primary polycythemia. In secondary polycythemia, clinical history and examination, including measurement of oxygen saturation, will identify most patients with polycythemia, secondary to hypoxia. If no disease that can stimulate increased erythropoietin levels is found, then look for tumors that can be the reason for ectopic erythropoietin production. Do the imaging of the abdomen, pelvis, chest, and brain. Now the treatment. As you can well guess, the treatment of polycythemia will depend on the cause in most cases. In relative polycythemia, manage the causative factors like obesity, hypertension, smoking, and rehydration in diarrhea and vomiting. In secondary polycythemia again, treatment includes the treatment of the cause. For example, management of cardiopulmonary diseases, renal diseases, and cessation of smoking. 
treat the tumors, which are making ectopic erythropoietin. In secondary polycythemia, venesection is done only in cases where there are cumbersome symptoms. Care shall be taken not to lower hematocrit too low in patients with cardiopulmonary disease because that may worsen their dyspnea. In primary polycythemia, venesection is the mainstay of treatment. The aim is to keep hematocrit less than 45% to decrease the risk of thrombosis. In younger patients at low risk, this is done by venesection only. While at higher risk, such as age greater than 60 years, or history of previous thrombosis, hydroxyurea is also used in addition to repeated venesections. Pedulated interferon, instead of hydroxyurea, is preferred in women of childbearing age. In low doses for thrombosis prophylaxis, daily aspirin is given in all patients of primary polycythemia and those with cardiovascular risk factors in secondary polycythemia.